Okay, so last week we were talking about sustainability, and this week I want to try and show you about uh, the tragedy of the commons. And the tragedy of the commons is this problem whereby basically you have a common resource and people aren't measuring it, they're not accounting for it properly, and it basically just gets all used up. Okay. And so what I want to try and do with this little experiment here in the classroom is I want to show you what happens when there's no property rights, that there's this common resource that everybody's using. So I've got three victims here. You guys are awesome. Each one of these victims are fisher men and fisher women. Go girls, all right? Out there fishing the sea in their little glass boats, yeah? And the sea is full of um, peanut fish. Now, peanuts. Anaphylactus. <laughs> so the rules of the game are pretty simple, right? So um, I'm going to roughly double these fish in the sea every single year at the end of the year. And each one of my fishermen or fisher people are going to have the chance to get their nets and go fishing, all right? And that, you know, fisherman number one, two, three, at the end of three, God, the teacher, yeah, <laughs> is going to double the number of fish in the sea. Is that cool? Now the thing about going fishing in the sea is that there's not a lot of people in the middle of the ocean, so no one can see what the hell's going on. Is that right? You, you ever been in the middle of the ocean? Kind of freaky, all right? So, to make that more obvious, what we're going to do is make it secret. <laughs> Number one, go fishing, sir. Yeah, 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 go take as many as you want. The objective is, of course, here to win and get as many as the next person, and at the end, I will double the number of fish in the sea. Well, it's up to you, all right? If you want to get more than the next guy, because it's a competitive market. <laughs> all right, okay, contestant number two. Yep, leave the fishing rod. All right, so we've got the fishing net in here. Contestant number three is looking like she's probably not going to win the game at this stage. <laughs> it's a total secret, okay? No one knows how much fish each person has. It's taken a long time. Contestant number three! She's secretly got her little cup. Yeah. Contestant number three goes fishing. <laughs> Contestant number three is just going, oh my god. <laughs> Alright, remember I'm going to double the number of fish in the sea at the end of this as well. Alright, thank you very much, contestant number three. Alrighty, let's, uh, let's double the number of fish. So we're going to take this down. And God's going to double the number of zero. <laughs> <laughs> All right, now I've recorded this a few times in the tutorial, and normally my first round aren't full of greedy bastards who go and take everything the first time around, but by the second time they figure it out, right? So, contestant number one, show me your, what have you got? Contestant number two, show me what you got. Contestant number three... I think pretty much contestant number two is the undeclared winner. Congratulations, contestant number two. <laughs> okay, so, so I mean, if we kept playing this ground, what would happen is contestant number one would go, you beauty. I'm not letting you win again. Just going to pour it next time. Yep. And, and, and why, why... Normally what happens is that people play the game at once by the second time they know that if they don't take it the next person will right so this game never lasts longer than two rounds at most right why why does this always happen why do i always end up with an empty seat and no fish because there's no transparency there's no transparency what else everyone wants more than the other person yeah it, it, everybody's greedy and selfish i, I admit that what else? You already know if you don't don't do it, somebody do it. 
Yeah, but but you know if you leave it there, then it will double at the end too, right? But we don't know you you give it the natural in the in the naturally we don't know double up or not. You know what I mean? Yeah, 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 yeah. So so there's this whole there's this whole tension between yeah. do I wait or do I like you know grab it now? And the tendency will be to grab it now because if I don't, someone else will, right? Okay, so, so that's the first round of the game. Let's, let's change the rules of the game very, very slightly, okay? So this is what we started off with. And um, God hasn't changed, okay? The rules of, of nature are still there that all these fish, the mummy fish and the daddy fish will still double at the end of the game. Okay. What is different this time is that we're going to allocate market power to one group and not the other, well, somebody is going to actually control the market here. Yeah? And I'm going to give all the market power to a market maker authority. I'm just going to give it to the most greedy person on the team. Thanks very much, greedy person. <laughs> and the rules are different here because, one, we're going to have transparency. So we, like, I'm watching you, as is the entire class, and also, importantly, the other people. Okay? So, one, there's transparency. Two, you can allocate whatever you damn well feel like to everybody else. You go last, and I will double the number of fish at the end of the game. Do you understand? Beautiful. Contestant, market power come here. Market power, allocate the number of fish to contestant number one. Contestant. Next, yet yeah, three, yeah. I'm the last? Yeah, 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 yeah. You allocate to yourself last. <laughs> That's even less than what she got the first time around, but anyway. And then you allocate to yourself. And, and that the end? Yeah. Okay, so God comes down from heaven, or the mummy fish and the daddy fish get busy. Yeah, Round number two. Round number three. Round number... Well, the... Okay. God comes down, God doubles the number of fish, back to where it was roughly. <laughs> yeah, that's indus industrial fishing here. <laughs> desk here and that's the market authority there on the right yep yeah, they look um they look about they look about equal yeah well that's a little bit disappointing because it's not exactly the outcome I was expecting but that's okay do you, you want to play this game one more time okay this time we will use a different person you, you're very fun. Different people make different decisions about how to allocate resources, right? Which is essentially what accounting is all about. How do we measure the resources and who's got it, right? One, two, one, I said, I you, do, you have complete power. You are an authority here. Do what you want. You are a stingy authority, but you have complete authority. <laughs> one. Complete market authority. <laughs> Not a complete jerk. 
It's still mostly there. <laughs> there we go, Industrial Strength Market Authority. Alright. Alright, round three. <laughs> Skip her. Should I point that out? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay, and now we're, we're out of fish again here. Okay, so that, that was interesting. Uh, both times we ran out of fish with two different market authorities. However, um, I played this game a lot. Generally, what happens here is that um, the market authority usually recognizes that the fish is a limited resource. If they keep going, then um, they just need to leave something left over. Okay. <laughs> The, the, the people who catch on to this game pretty quickly usually go, you know what, if I just give out one or two initially, then this is going to like grow exponentially. So initially we're going to be really conservative, and then when it grows to much larger, then we're going to be able to dish out more, so we've got more for the future. This is what sustainability is all about. Remember the definition of sustainability? The Brundtland Report from the United Nations in 1987, <coughs> right? So the Brundtland Report says that we need to be able to meet the needs of today's um, generation without taking away from the needs of future generations, right? And so this is what allocating the market rights to a single authority absolutely does because that person who is holding the spoon at the time recognizes that they need to manage this effectively so that there's something left over, all right? Now, if you, this is, um, yeah, it's kind of not what I was expecting as a market outcome because ordinarily what happens is, remember how you were allocating them and you allocated them roughly about equal, all right? He went for a little bit longer, but he was just very, very unequal. Both of them were unexpected outcomes. But I find generally what happens is that whenever there is transparency involved, that person goes, you know what, I'm a bit worried about what other people think about me. And so you end up with a fairly equal distribution plus there's always stuff left over in the sea. Does that make sense? And so what happens by allocating rights to a single party is naturally, through transparency and managing things for the future, you get intergenerational equity, which is leaving enough for tomorrow, and you get intragenerational equity, which is equity between parties at the same time. Does that usually, well, okay. Apparently you've just proven my hypothesis wrong. Thank you very much. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. All right. And I've played this game many, many times. I've recorded this in about three different tutorials across the semesters. And what I'm going to do is put this all on YouTube. But this is roughly the outcome that I get every single time. Okay, that where I get something left over in the sea and generally equality at the end of it. All right. So the commons is any any item that is commonly held. Right? In England, there used to be these things called town commons where everybody could basically put their sheep to graze. All right? And it got overgrazed because nobody owned it, so nobody respected it, because why should they manage it for the future? Right? The same thing happened with the RLC. We had a look at that when we looked at water. And the same thing's happening with fishing right now. But the moment that somebody has the power to control it and manage it for the future, then we get sustainability happening. Can sustainability in markets coexist? That's a normative thing. I believe so. I've given you an example of where that can happen with well-regulated markets. Um, but maybe you don't believe that. Again, I can't make that decision for you. Thank you very much for playing. Yes, I'm free. So I want to know what you think. Do you think it's even possible to actually have like a sustainable world and have greed and self-interest as a central part of our society and have these both at the same time? Let me know in the comments below. Also, if you found this a really easy way to understand the tragedy of the commons, you can share it with your friends or you can even show your teacher. 
If you're really interested in learning more about business and the intriguing possibilities that we can actually play with in accounting, why don't you subscribe to my channel? Happy study, guys.